Hello, this will be the first video tutorial out of a series of short screencasts on how to operate and manage the Outlook email that you have at the school level. So some features are going to be things that are new to the Office 2010 Outlook version and some are just features that were actually existing before but you may not know about. So you can pick and choose a tutorial video that uh, serves your purpose. So for this one, I'm going to go over the basics of how to navigate the page. So upon opening your Outlook, there's different tabs across the top. So you have your File tab, Home, Send Receive, Folder, View, Add-ins. Um, and obviously the main tab in which you're going to be using most often is your Home tab, which takes you to the view that you are probably the most familiar with. However, to start off, I'm gonna start with the File tab. So there's a couple little features here that are useful and it looks a little different than how it did before. These items were available in the previous version also but um, they're just accessed a little bit differently. So here um, if we go into the file tab one that is of interest to many is this automatic replies. So for example if you are going away on vacation or if you are out of the office for a day or two you can actually type in a reply here so that if someone were to email you, you could say that when you would return. So you would place a return date here, for example, and maybe give a contact information for who they could contact in your absence. So for example, if you were sick, you could put that here or, or if you're on a holiday. And then you would go OK. The one thing to remember in doing that is that when you come back, that you go back to the automatic replies and you take that off. So you would ensure that you would change this back to I am in the office and you would then not be displaying the message that you had previously set up. Um, there are some information pieces that you may be interested in as far as account settings. I'm not going to go into those details. Usually that is not something you need a whole lot to deal with because that is more so for the technicians. Um, but there is that tab area. Mailbox cleanup is talking more so about how to delete or or archive your content. So with this email system and with um, the previous version, you could do this also, but the archiving of email. So for example, if you get a lot of emails but you wanna keep them, then you can actually archive them and actually save them as a file on your computer. So that's what this archive option is for. When you delete items on your computer, it goes to your deleted file, but it actually still stays inside your email and it actually goes towards your email limit still. So every now and then you actually have to go to this section, actually there's a couple of different ways of getting here, um, but this is one way in which you can empty your deleted folder so that you're not taking up the storage for your mailbox capacity. And the mailbox cleanup is more for advanced users, I wouldn't worry about that one either. Under rules and alerts, uh, this is more for advanced features too. Um, this is so if you wanted to maybe forward email to another one, you could go about doing this. However, um, with being an employee of Chinook's Edge School Division, this would be your primary email. So the rules are not used a whole lot here, um, but there are some functions that, that some may want to know about. So if you know about managing rules and you're already familiar with that, this is a section that you do that. Um, under the other areas, the open is this very basic things here, so opening the calendar, etc. I'm going to show you a better way of doing that. And there's print functions here too, but again, I'll show you how that works also in a different area. However, the options section on this file tab is important. So here is where you would go to change many things uh, that all users would need to know about. So under the general, this is actually pretty basic, so you're not going to be dealing too much here, although some of you may like to change the color of your screen, so if I wanted to change it, I could change it to a different color. Um, and then if I go down to the next tab, this is where the critical area is. So uh, when we compose messages, it's really good to change this to always check spelling before sending. So that's important to put there. Um, the signature section is really encouraged for everyone to do this, no matter what your capacity is in the school division, because then when you're sending an email to a person, they know what they know who you are, what your role is, and what school you belong to, and how to contact you. So that's really important. So to set up a signature for yourself that will automatically go on every email that you send, so you're not having to type your name and your contact information on every email, this is a place that you would go for that. So, and you can actually set up different ones. So for here, I actually have three different types of 
uh, signatures and depending on the context I would choose the appropriate uh, signature line. So you would, here I've put a graphic inside here and have also typed some information, but you can just physically go in here and type by clicking on new. So I'm just going to call this sample so you see what this looks like. And then here is where you would type your information as a teacher, making sure it's readable. And you may have um, maybe a classroom phone number or something like that. Definitely you could put, so if I taught grade five, I would put grade five and then the name of the school in which I taught at. So that would just be something um, that you could definitely put there as a sample. And then I go OK. And now if I go back to signatures, I will actually see my sample signature there too. And if I ever want to delete any of them, I just highlight the different signature samples that I have up here. And I obviously don't want that anymore. So I just go delete. And you just read what it says. And it says, are you sure you want to get rid of it? And I say yes. And then OK. So the signature area is quite important. And a lot of people uh, do not have that included on their emails. And that is something that is definitely useful to do. Um, other area is under stationery and font. You can actually choose different types of stationery if you like. Some of them are more readable than others, so I tend not to use them a whole lot, but some people do like the creativity of having the capability of doing that. So what you're seeing here in this display would actually appear on your emails. So sometimes it gets a little busy and, and some of them look more professional than others. So you just choose one that, if you want, choose one that would work for that purpose. You can also change your email message fonts also. So it defaults to the 11 point font, but you can change that to a different style and size font if you like. And also if you're applying of messages, you can also change those too. So you have lots of flexibility there. Okay, under the Outlook panes, if you want to change and customize your reading panes, there's other areas and I'll show you later how to do, but here you can actually choose how many items you want in your reading pane and as they are read, then they are marked, etc. So this is just a very simple one. I'll show you a more in-depth one a little bit later. Message arrival, this is important. So if you like a little sound to play when your mail comes, then you would leave this uh, selected as the default. If you find that that noise is a little bit uh, distracting, you just go in here and take that off and remove it. And um, what else would be of use in here? Replies and forwards. This would be more for advanced features, but you can actually decide when replying to a message what you want to include. So do you just want your reply only or do you want to include the original message below, etc. Um, saving of messages. So this, this one, it, the top one is actually pretty important. So if you're working on an item and then you get called away from your desk, your email program will actually save the draft that you have if it's been sent, if it hasn't been, if it's just sitting there and hasn't been sent after three minutes. So, and then for you to recover that, you'll go to your drafts folder inside your home tab, and I'll show you where that is later also. Um, the sent messages, you, when you're sending your messages, you can have your different uh, default level. It defaults to normal and I would leave it as, as that and then as a need be basis you can change to high or low priority which I'll show you in another segment video. Um, the rest of this is pretty straightforward and for those that want it just go in here and play around with the different things that are here. There's lots of possibilities with this email program. I'm going to go down to contacts. So this is where you can, this is one out of a couple different places you can go to add or change your contacts and I'm going to show you in your email section also. Um, notes and journals. Um, if some people like to do the notes in here. They're basically like a, a virtual sticky note you can create for yourself and your notes will appear within your uh, email program. So you can certainly use that if you wish. Under the advanced uh, section, there's a couple little things in here that um, most users probably would like to know about. Um, you can use the calendars on here just as you could before, but I'm going to go into um, the calendar details a little bit later. But this is where you would go to have the reminder. So for example, if I entered an appointment into my calendar, I can actually decide if I want a little ding to appear or, or to have a little sound um, 
pop up 15 minutes prior to that meeting happening, for example. So I would want to show the reminder. And um, the rest of it is just good practices to leave to the defaults. There are RS, RSS feed um, capabilities here too. So those that know what I'm talking about might be interested in that. It's not necessary. And again, a lot of these features existed in the old one. It's just a matter of going in here and looking at the different functions and choosing what works for you. So definitely don't feel like you have to use all this stuff because you do not have to, but it's there if you would like. Um, the last section I'm gonna just go over is the quick access toolbar. So this is a, a small little toolbar that appears above the file and home tab, etc. And it's actually in all of the Office programs. And it just allows you to have a quick access button uh, for things that you use often. So if you print a lot of your emails, which I'm sure most of you don't, um, you can certainly go here and add which items you would like to appear on that quick access toolbar. This is one place in which you can do that. So that concludes the file tab for this segment of the video series.